What you doing? I am cleaning up pine needles. Why? <laughs> well, we're going to load the car here in a few days, and I thought I'd better get it cleaned up. And you know, maybe this is a good time for us to give everybody a tour of our truck. What do you think? Sure. Welcome to our tow vehicle. We've had so many questions in the last nine months since we put out our top 10 questions on converting an HDT to an RV hauler. So many of you have wanted to see the truck and I guess it's probably time that we show it. It's filthy, my apologies, but it is what it is. I couldn't wash it in this park. <laughs> so it's a 2017 Western Star 5700 XE. It is built as an over-the-road truck. We purchased this truck about uh, three years ago and we have loved it. It has got the Detroit 15 liter engine in it and the engine may look a little overwhelming to some of you, but trust me, I don't even work on today's dualies. So I just take it this <laughs> into the mechanic and have them do the work. But it's really easy to get into, to check the oil, to check the filters, uh, to wash the windshield. The, the uh, hood opens up and then I can climb up on one of the tires and take care of whatever I need. I can check my oil, I can check my filters, I can check my fuel filters, check my fluid levels. Uh, it's really super simple. In fact, I even jumped a neighbor last month, had a dead battery, so we pulled this up. It jumped him off of this and uh, he was good to go. It was an interesting experience. I've never jumped off of a big rig like this. It has a 10 speed automated transmission with double overdrive, so 12 total speeds. It does skip shift. What that means is that the truck computer determines the load and the grade that it's on and then it will start out in whatever gear. Could be third, could be fifth, could be first. It just all depends on what the truck computer decides is best for it. We bought this truck with about 104,000 miles on it and we have put about 46,000 miles on it now. Uh, we're just coming up on 150,000 miles. These trucks are built, I'm going to safely say, for a million miles and that's why we didn't have an issue buying it with a, over 100,000 miles. Uh, we know some friends that have purchased used HDTs with 400, 500, 600, even 800,000 miles on them. We're probably not going to outlive this truck. This truck will outlive us based on the miles that we put on it and the loads that we put on them. People ask, why did we buy an HDT? Kelly and I have been RVing for a number of years and we've gone through three different dualies. We went through a 99 Ford F350 with a 7.3 liter. That was my favorite truck. But it, we wore it out. We just flat wore it out. I replaced the brakes on it twice. I replaced the brake rotors once. I, I had, I, it just, it just, we wore it out. It had 200 and some thousand miles on it when we, uh, when we sold it. And so we upgraded into a Chevy Duramax, and quite honestly, I didn't have an issue with that truck. Uh, Kelly hated it. It was uncomfortable. The cab, she said, felt small and compact. There was no storage. It felt like she was riding on cob cardboard. So we decided after a year to upgrade into a Dodge Dually, and golly, that thing, we went through O2 sensors and computer changes, and 
uh, front axle joints and main U, uh, driveline U joints and just a number of issues with the Dodge and I just got tired of being nickel and dimed to death and so we moved from that into a medium duty Freightliner uh, M2 business class and then when we decided to go full time we knew we were going to want an extra vehicle and the medium duty truck just wasn't set up for it with a bed to haul an extra vehicle so that's when we moved into this uh, the couple that owned this purchased it as a demo truck off the lot in Fort Worth Texas or just outside of Fort Worth and uh, they converted it into an RV hauler it has never seen over the road uh, the truck came with a as most over the road trucks do it came with a five-year or 500,000 mile drivetrain warranty since we're still under 500,000 miles that warranty is still good on the drivetrain itself and we've been we, we love it it's just been a great truck uh, it's got all the creature comforts of home it's got leather seats it's got air ride seats it's got an air ride cab it's got uh, adaptive cruise control it's got lane assist it's just got all the features that you would want in any high-end dually pickup truck it's a little bit bigger uh, I like to tell people it's the same width as your dually on the back hips it's just that that width continues all the way up the front of the truck as I've said before driving this truck is not a whole lot different than driving a class A motorhome we're about 29 and a half feet total length um, we have tandem axles on the back which a lot of your 45 foot class A motor coaches have we purchased this truck with super singles rather than the tandem duels. We, uh, I, I don't have an issue with the super singles. People ask me all the time, why did you put super singles on it? That's the way the truck came. The truck is set up with a double bunk sleeper in the back. I'll show that to you here in a second. It's got plenty of room inside. It is uh, titled as a private RV out of South Dakota. The bed is nothing flashy. It's just a standard steel bed. We tow our smart car on the back sideways, as you've probably seen in our videos. And it just does a great job. It's 505 horse. As I say, an automated, automatic transmission with the Detroit 15 liter engine. It. Let's go take a look inside. Getting into a big truck is a little different. You've got two steps and then a bunch of grab rails. So this particular truck has a grab rail here for my right hand. It has a grab rail here for my left hand. I just step up, reach up, grab the steering wheel, and pull myself and slide in. Really no problem. Uh, I can imagine if you've got arthritis real bad or, or bad knees or something, you might have an issue getting in and out. But for the most part, we get in and out without an issue. One of the things I will mention on this, we have a Tucson brake controller for the trailers. This truck has air brakes, obviously, and a standard electric brake controller won't work in these trucks. So the Tucson brake controller ties in with my OBD2 computer port, so it knows Whenever I apply pressure on the brakes, the computer sends a signal to the brain of the brake controller, and then it sends the message back to the trailer to decide what kind of brakes the trailer needs. The interior comfort is one of the main reasons we bought an HDT. There is so much room in this cabin, and don't get overwhelmed by the buttons and the knobs and the gauges in here. It's just that it's got a little bit more monitoring than a normal truck does. So for instance I've got utility lights, I've got headlights, I've got dash lights, I've got clearance and ID lights, I've got the hazards, I've got driving lights, and I've got fog lights. That's all on the top row. Then I've got mirror defrost, I've got a regen button, I've got a override shutdown, I've got a lane alert where I can silence the lane alert for a certain amount of time. I've got a cruise control limit 
and I've got a deep mud and snow. I've got the sleeper lights on a button. I've got the air dump for the bed. I've got the lock for the inner axle lock. They're not overwhelming. They're really over not. It's just there's a lot there that I can control. And then the gauges give me air tanks, air tanks, air tanks, air pressure, speedometer, oil pressure, fuel, RPMs, engine temp, transmission temp, axle temp, turbo, and oil temp. Your standard gauges, it's just that the nice thing about this is it's got gauges for just about everything so I can monitor it while I go down the road. Also in the cab, it allows me to put my 7 inch backup camera monitor in here and it doesn't even take up much space. Up here, I've got my backup camera for just the truck that I can turn on and off and see what's behind me and I use that while I'm hooking up. I've got a CB radio, regular radio, um, it's got Bluetooth just like your normal truck would. On the steering column, again, just like in your normal truck, I've got cruise control, I've got set, I've got resume, I've got mute for the radio, I've got, I can flash my tail lights to thank the guy behind me for flashing his lights for passing. I can flash my headlights to let the guy in front of me know it's safe to come over. I've got volume control and of course I've got my handy dandy suicide knob. The parking brake, this is the air trailer air supply which obviously we don't use. Climate control, GPS, you can see We've got room in here. Oh, and my tire pressure monitor system. We've got room in this cab to put all kinds of gauges and monitors and cameras, and it doesn't feel like we're crowded at all. I've got air ride seats. They go up and down. I've got adjustable armrests. And I'll be honest with you, I tell people, once I get this set up, this is just like driving your easy chair. It is really nice to have and very comfortable. The seats are leather. They retract back. They come forward. It's got lumbar. Everything you'd ever want in a high-end pickup truck we have in the cab of this truck. Kelly's got storage with a box up top, quick access storage, a box down below. Tons of storage in here, along with a wonderful speaker system for the stereo. We really, really are comfortable in this. One of the things I'd like to mention is that those of you that are intimidated with the transmission, this is so easy. Right now it's in neutral. I can flip it up. It's now in drive, and it drives just like your automated pickup does, your automatic transmission on your pickup truck does. The nice thing about this is it will determine what gear to start in. So for instance, a lot of times it will only start in third gear, maybe fifth gear, depending on whether I'm on a flat surface or a, a little bit of a rise or a little bit of a downhill. So all I have to do is flip it in a drive and it determines what gear it needs to go in. I can flip it into reverse. Same thing. I've got reverse now, just like your regular pickup truck. I have a little touch button on the end here. Most of the time we drive this truck in what they call economy mode. I let the computer decide what works best for it. It determines the RPM, the turbo boost, what it needs to do, and it just does it automatically. I can override that with the touch of a button and it goes into what we call performance mode. All I have to do is push a button and it puts it in performance mode when I'm coming up on a grade that puts it in, it changes the power band of the of the transmission. Rather than economy mode, it turns it into performance mode and it will shift at a higher RPM to stay in that, that high power band going up a hill. I can also touch it and it'll go into manual mode. Once it's in manual mode, then all I have to do is shift up or shift down. I can shift this just like if I had a stick shift right here. I can manually shift it with the flick of, of this knob. 
The other thing I like about this truck is the engine brake. It's got a three stage engine brake. If it's in the up position, the engine brake is off. I can bring it down to level one, which is a slow engine brake. I can take it to level two. That gives me a little more engine brake and I can come all the way down to level three and that'll throw us into our seat belts as we're, as we're approaching. Uh, so three speed, three speed engine brake is really nice. My wiper controls are over here on the other side on the turn signal uh, lever. Again, don't be intimidated by all this. Once you understand what everything does, it's really nice to have. So let's take a look in the back. This is a double bunk sleeper setup and we have never stayed in it. This is where our dog Jake used to lay on, on that bunk. Um, but you can see that we use it mostly for storage. Up above here, the upper bunk, and again, I've got bags here, but what I've done is, is I have stored my fishing gear up here in this bunk and then raised it up and, and my fishing gear sits inside that upper bunk. We've got trays for storage on both sides. We, as you can see, I've got my big tackle box over here. I've got my, my motorcycle helmets here. This truck was set up with a table that went in between those two seats that I think we've used two or three times since we bought the truck. It sits on a pole. We usually don't use it, so it normally sits back here, but we probably just need to, to dispose of it. We've got cupboards. So in this cupboard, we've got our coffee maker, our coffee supplies, our microwave oven. Because this truck has an inverter on board, we can run our electric appliances going down the road. This cubby here is where the refrigerator used to be. The refrigerator died and so we pulled it out and we just haven't replaced it. We've kind of turned it into some more storage. We'll eventually put another refrigerator in here, but that's where the refrigerator goes. On the other side, we've got storage up above. We've got cabinets. We store extra bedding in here just in case we have to stay in the truck for whatever reason. So we've got pillows and blankets in here. We've got normal storage for just odds and ends, uh, tie down straps and, uh, and extra paper towels and that sort of thing. We have two drawers, uh, again, basically for storage. We've got some towels in here. We've got some screwdrivers, flashlight, that sort of thing. And then again, more storage for eating on the road. Uh, we've got some stuff in here that we can use for our food prep in the microwave. This is a very comfortable vehicle and we really thoroughly enjoy it. So the million dollar question is, do you drive it? No, I don't. I have no desire to. It intimidates me. And the other question is, is will I ever do it? Never say never, but <laughs> I, I'm very happy in the passenger seat. I really enjoy driving and this truck has changed the way that we travel. It really has. Yeah, we, yeah. we've we had, not planned, but we've ended up with some really long travel days, 10, 12 hour days, not by choice, it just kind of happened. Yeah. And I'm not stiff and sore and mm -mm. Uh, when I get out of the truck, it's yeah. uh, it's very comfortable. I'm, yeah. I'm tired from driving, but yeah. you know, I'm not stiff and sore. So it's a real comfortable truck to drive. If you haven't seen our video yet, on the top 10 questions we get asked about converting an HDT into an RV hauler. I'll put a link up above. If you have some more questions, feel free to comment below or get a hold of us through our website at sweettravels.com. That's right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna wrap this one up. Thanks for watching guys from Newport, Washington. It all starts with an idea. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>